Hello, Maurice. Good evening. Hello, hello, Maurice. Hello, hello, good evening. How are you, Maurice? I'm fine. Excellent. What about your day? How was it? Yeah. Very relaxed. Oh, excellent. I think that that is good. Right. <laughs> we are on Thursday already, so tomorrow is Friday. Then, okay, but if you have, um, if you had a, a relaxing day, that is awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the Saturday, no work, the Saturday. Oh my God, really? You are going to have a day off? But you always have day off on, on the weekend, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, okay, that is good, Maurice. Okay, perfect. I'm happy that you actually are okay and that you had a relaxing day today. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we also have Tony. How are you, Tony? Hello, teacher. Very, very good. Thanks. Excellent. Okay, what about your day? Relaxing, tiring? Um, <laughs> interesting. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit stressful. <laughs> but good, okay? Because you enjoy what you do, Tony. Thanks, thanks. Yes, I okay. need a few minutes uh, only uh, and a call. Uh, and I go, I come back. I come back. Thank you, Tony. All right. Good evening, Abigail. How are you? Good evening. I'm sick. I have flu. Flu. Yes, I am. Have you taken some pills already? Mm, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I hope you get better. Okay, Abigail. Yes. Okay. So we also have Emerson. Emerson, good evening. How are you, Emerson? Good evening, miss. I will work. Okay, and what about your day? How was it? Good, so so relaxing, tiring, busy. So far, so good. So far, so good. Perfect. All right, thank you guys. Okay, so we are going to start with today's class. And for today's class, we have um a new topic which is interesting, and we are going to learn a lot. So we are going to start with the warm-up. Then the topic for today is going to be either or neither nor. We are going to cover this topic. We also have listening quizzes and we have grammar quiz uh, related to all of the topics that we have covered, okay? So it is a quiz about vocabulary and grammar. Then we also have the speaking time and the wrap up, okay? Those are the main um, points that we are going to cover today. And we are going to start with the warm up. So we are going to start with a tongue twister that we need to say. Yes. So lesser, leather, never, weather, 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 better. Yeah. So lesser, leather, never, weather, 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 better. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. Uh -huh. So in this case, um, let's see. Okay, let's see. What is the meaning of lesser? What is the meaning of lesser? It says lesser leather. Uh -huh. Menos. Yes, Ajá. es como de menor, el menos, right? Comparándose con otros. So, lesser, leather, never, weather, 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 better. Es como decir, el cuero de menor calidad, ok, el cuero de menor calidad nunca resistió el clima húmedo, weather. Húmedo. Uh 
Yes. Entonces, cuero se dice leather. Yes. Leather. Uh -huh. Okay, Maurice, can you please say it? Lesser, better, never, weather, weather. Uh -huh. Weather better. Okay, very good. Once again, una última vez. Le lesser, letter, never, weather, 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 better. Very good. Yes. Thank you. Emerson? Lesser, letter, never, weather, 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 better. Better. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Eh, well, Abigail, can you say it? I don't know if you feel okay to uh, speak. Lesser, leather, never, weather, 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 better. Okay, thank you. All right, very good. Carlos Omar, can you please say the tone twister? Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Read. Yes. Lesser, lesser, never, weather, weather, <laughs> weather, <laughs> weather, weather, better. Okay, weather. again, again, Carlos. Lesser, leather, never, weather, 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 better. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So, lesser, leather, never, weather, 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 better. Yeah, we need to practice it. Lesser leather, never weather, 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 better. Yeah? Practice it. Mm. Yeah. Um, in your house, okay? Whenever you are alone, practice it and practice it and practice. This is for everybody, okay? All right, guys. Now let's start with anagrams. Okay, so... Who remembers what is an anagram? What is an anagram? Who can tell us what is an anagram, guys? Is word a great with the same letters? Excellent. Yes. For, for, for another word. Okay. Yes, that is correct. All right. So, in this case, um, can you please read, Carlos Omar, read the definition and the example, and the example. Okay. Anagrams. An anagram is a play on word created by the, by re, re re rearranging, the, re rearranging the, the letter of the or, original words to make a new word or phrase. Uh -huh. Anagram is some examples can be fun in whitey and they often end in hilarious results. Example, miles smile. Excellent. Now guys, witty. 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 Yes. Witty. Uh -huh. Anagram. So an anagram is a play on words created by rearranging. What is the meaning of rearranging, guys? Rearranging means reorganizar, reordenar. Rearranging the letters of the original word to make a new word or phrase, what Carlos said. Anagram examples can be fun and witty. What is the meaning of witty? Do you remember about that adjective, witty? No. Okay. Witty means creative, okay? Creative, somebody that is creative. If you are witty, so you are very creative. You have a lot of ideas, uh -huh. okay? And they often end in hilarious results. What is the meaning of hilarious? Funny. Funny, this is funny. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. funny, okay? Como divertido, hilarious, yeah? And we have the example. Miles is mile. So we use the same letters and we create another word. Miles is mile. We use rearrange the letters. Okay? Solamente las reorganizamos. We rearrange the letters. 
Yeah. All right. So then let's work on the exercise. Let's rearrange. Okay. Let's rearrange the letters to form a new one. Okay. So we have the first one, which is stu. Which is another word that we can create with those letters. With the first one, sweat. Sweat. Okay. But mm. I need. But you need. Uh huh. With the same letters. Sweat. 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 Okay, in the third person, right? With the letter S. Okay, okay. Let's say that, yes. Okay, so we can create wet. What else? Mile, the milla, the second one. Oh, the second one. Okay, the second one, mile. It's mile two. Uh, no, the second one, no. Mile. Okay, mile, yes. Replay. Uh -huh. Play, player. Okay, very good. So, player. Play. Excellent. Maybe we can rebuild or reorganize the word with a name. Yes. Yeah, the second one maybe Elin. Oh, a Elin, spelling? like the church. Ah, okay. Mm. So it is like this. I don't know. But okay. What about number four? The number four, cloth. Okay, very good. So pronunciation. Cloud. 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 What about ear? R. Excellent. R. Very good. Okay, then teach. Okay, Nelly. Teach. Cheat. Very good. Okay, cheat. What about from read? Read, um, dear. Dear. My God, Carlos, my, you are good at this. Okay, what about teal? Late. Excellent, late. Heart. Which one? Oh. Trap. Oh. Yes. Excellent. Como trampa, right? Yes. Very good. And the last one. What about the last one, guys? Which is heart. Mm -hmm. Fear, like fear, teatro, fear. Oh no. no, we need more words. No. Yes, we need more words. More, 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 yes, more fear. words. Mm -hmm. So, no. Mm. Mm-hmm. We need another mm -hmm. error. Error. Which one? Rider. I need another error. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. An another R. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm? Maybe Earth. Okay, Earth. Yes. Is that one? <laughs> Very good. Okay. Um, West as well. Let me see if we can add, let me see. Air. As well, right? Uh, okay, yes, guys. But very good because you guessed most of them, okay? Like fast, okay? Perfect. This uh, type of, you know, um, I would say games are just for you to check on your vocabulary, right? With anagrams. Uh -huh. And you actually, um, you know, make your brain works, right? <laughs> so right now we are going to start with today's topic and today's topic is very simple, okay? It's very simple and it's something that we use um, a lot, okay? We use it. Okay, so we have uh, this grammar topic, which is either or. Who knows something about either or? No? Okay, so this is very simple, guys. Either or in Spanish would mean something like o, o. So either or is, um, is known in English as correlative conjunction. Es una conjunción. Yeah, it is a correlative conjunction. So either or basically is used in a sentence in the affirmative sense when referring to a choice between two possibilities. Look at this. Either I drive, and look at the structure, okay? So we can have either at the beginning. Either I drive to the airport or I get a taxi. So what is like the interpretation in Spanish would be something like, o yo manejo al aeropuerto, o pido un taxi. Yes? So, o yo hago esto o lo otro. O esto o lo otro. So por eso es o, o, either or, is a correlative conjunction. Es una conjunción correlativa, va siempre junta en la misma oración. No junta la par, pero sí en la misma oración. Look at that. Either at the beginning and we have or to join the other sentence. Then we have example number two. You can have either wine or beer. You can have, whenever you add a modal verb, you can have either wine or beer. Mm -hmm. Then either Peter or and can do it. O Peter or and. O Peter o Ana pueden hacer. It is either black or gray. Yeah. I can't remember. O es blanco o gris. No me recuerdo. Teacher, but it's not better just to say it's black or gray. I can't remember. Or it's not better to say Peter or Anne can do it, right? Yes, I mean, and this is where you will see how you are like um, improving your English level because a basic sentence would be without either, without either. 
Because if we remove, look at this, guys, okay? If you remove, guys, um, either, okay, we remove either, you can have wine or beer. And the idea is the same. Es la misma idea. The same idea. But less complex. Menos compleja y menos avanzada. Yeah. So either yeah. Peter or Anne can do it, right? So Peter or Anne can do it. La misma idea. Grammar less advanced. Teacher. Yes. Uh, with, with either uh, we have a uh, a uh, option, a uh, option. Why or B? You or can either right. why or B. Exactly. You can have letter A or B, correct. Two options, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what I need to see is that basically, guys, this type of topic is for you to get more vocabulary and improve your speaking. Okay. Eh, um, cuando decimos either or, porque también esa expresión es bien común que decimos either or. Entonces podemos decir, eso significa... Cualquiera de las dos, cualquier cosa. Either or. Ok. En lugar de decir whatever, whatever thing. ¿Sí? Entonces se puede decir either or. Either or is ok. Cualquiera está bien. Ok. So this one is with either or. When I use the translator deep L, mm -hmm. um, the, the translator gives me the option of bien. Of bien, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in this case, um, you can use that translation because remember that we need to interpret and it's okay, I mean. O bien. Mm -hmm. For example, o tu manejas al, al aeropuerto o O bien, Tomás, un taxi. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can also interpret it like that. Thank you. Very good. All right. So then, for example, um, if you want to say, guys, if you want to say, okay, um, o compro la casa o el carro. Either I buy the house or the car. X. Uh -huh. So you see, either I buy the house or the car. Sentence is always in present, perfect. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. In simple present. Perfect. Excuse me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you are talking about possibilities. Correct. Exactly. Mm -hmm. mm. Share. Yes. Um, and the structure is first. Uh, um, bueno, <laughs> se debe poner primero either. Uh, uh -huh. okay. Or. Hay estructura o no? There, you know, with this one, um, there is no structure, okay, like, um, no hay como una estructura que usted va a decir así al pie de la letra, but, pero, si usted se fija en estos ejemplos, okay, we have either al principio y después tenemos el presente simple. Luego, con esta oración número dos, tenemos un verbo modal. Entonces, either va después del verbo modal y el verbo. Miren, porque es la idea que se está brindando. Todo va a depender de su pensamiento, de cómo se quiere interpretar su idea. Porque si usted quiere decir, o tú puedes, eh, o tú puedes tener eh, vino o cerveza, o tú puedes tener vino o cerveza, pero creo que la idea sí se comprende, pero se escucha mejor si decimos. Tú puedes tener o vino o cerveza. 
¿Sí? Entonces aquí es como usted interprete su oración y como mejor suene. Okay. Entonces básicamente es eso. E igual acá en la eh, last one, right? So we have, it is either black or gray. It is, verb to be. También después de un auxiliar, si se fija. Pero por el pensamiento que estamos queriendo nosotros transmitir. So, in this case, this one is with either or. Recuerde, básicamente es o, o, o podemos interpretarlo como o, o bien, right? Mm -hmm. So, right now, what I need to do is that I need you to create three sentences using either or. And let's see if we are able to create those sentences. Using either or, remember that we use either or just with positive, with affirmative ideas, because we have two options, okay? I will leave this uh, slide so you can have the examples, okay? Okay, and send your sentences here to the chat. You can eat either mango or pear. Uh -huh. Correct. Mm -hmm. Very good. He doesn't want. Okay. Let me see. Either I eat tacos or tortas. And yes, we can have either camping or hiking. Yes, either Rodrigo or David. Yes. Um, excellent. I can listen to the rock. Yes. You could take either the bus or or could I pick you? Could I pick up you? Oh, you could take either the bus or I could pick you up. 
or I could pick you up. I can either have a breakfast or have a shower. Or a shower, okay? Either Pedro or Tony, but I need a drive, okay? I decide, I decide to leave two in the middle, Carlos. I decide, I decide to leave either happy or shy, okay? Either okay. we travel or stay here, yes. Either I drink coffee or soda, yes, but double F and double E, okay? Okay. Hmm, okay. All right. Mm. Do you have any question, guys? Something that is uh, not clear? Something that you would like to know? Tony, tell. Yes. Can I use either or in with the um, question mark question? The question mark or sorry because I I suppose in both ideas. Is necessary or not the the, the 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 question mark. The question mark. No, it is not necessary because um in this case you are like already giving the, the options, right? So the other person should pick up one. You are, you are not like creating a question. You are giving the two options already. So it's not necessary to create the question. Okay. Uh -huh. It's not necessary, okay? Yeah. All right. So this one is when it comes to either or. But we also have the other one, which is neither nor. And of course, if either or is for positive um, ideas, neither nor is for negative. Yeah. So whenever we um, say negative alternatives, for example, and neither nor means ni ni. So neither cheap nor nice, ni bonito ni barato. Neither cheap nor nice. Neither this nor that. Ni esto ni lo otro. He neither knows nor cares. Él ni sabe ni le importa. Neither Brian nor his wife. Ni Brian ni su esposa mentioned anything about the party. Mencionaron algo de la fiesta. ¿Mm? Ni ni. And it is something negative. Context, um, negative context. Hmm? So if we want to say, for example, guys, um, ni mi familia ni mis amigos saben que viajaré. Ni mis amigos ni mi familia saben que viajaré. Neither my friends or nor my family knows that I travel. Okay. Neither my friends nor my family knows that I'm going to travel or that I'm traveling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
en un dicho que tenemos en El Salvador que es ni hace ni deja hacer. Uh -huh. Neither do it nor deja hacer ni hace. Neither do it. Uh -huh. Ni nor, lo hace. Or. Eh, uh -uh. Up to do it. Neither do it nor have to do it. Así sería, ¿verdad? I think that in that case, no, no, Tony. Because ni lo hace ni lo deja hacer. I think that would be different. Mm. Ni lo deja hacer. Uh -huh. So it should be something like neither. Neither does it. Neither does it. Nor lets it do it. Let's it do it. Or do so to not repeat it. But I think that there is a saying. Creo que esa es una frase. Veamos si hay una equivalencia a esa frase. Ni lo hace. Ni lo deja hacer. I think that there is um there is a an idiom. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ni hace ni deja ser. Um, there is an expression. I you will see. I will send it to the chat so you can see it. The interpretation is very different from what we think. Because it's like be a dog in the manger. Uh -huh. There is a phrase, I mean, those are idioms. Esas son como expresiones idiomáticas que sí podemos como interpretarlas con esto, pero al final no es así como la forma correcta. Like you mentioned that you don't need to translate uh -huh. uh, like the, the, the expression. The, yeah. Maybe it's performed or... or Correct. Mm -hmm. It will be different. Uh -huh. okay. Yes. Okay. So... How can we say, guys, how can we say, um, how can we say, no tengo, no tengo ni paciencia ni tiempo para hacerlo? No tengo ni paciencia ni tiempo para hacerlo. Ya saliste. But take into account that neither nor is already negative, okay? So, I have, no tengo ni paciencia, ni tiempo para hacerlo. I have no patience, neither. I have neither. Patience. Nor time. To do it. So like this is already negative. We don't have to add any other auxiliary verb in negative. Porque ese ya es el negativo. Entonces eso tiene que ir en positivo. I have neither patience nor time to do it. Y ahí dice, no tengo ni paciencia ni tiempo para hacer. Así lo interpretamos. ¿Por qué? Porque neither ya es algo negativo, ya es algo negativo. Y no podemos, si se recuerda, no podemos poner dos veces negativos. Double negatives. No se puede. Uh -huh. 
eh, no puedes beber ni soda ni jugo. ¿Cómo lo podemos decir? No puedes beber ni soda ni jugo. Uh -huh. You can drink neither soda nor juice. Juice. Uh -huh. You can drink exactly. You can drink neither soda nor juice. Uh -huh. I mean. Eso siempre, toda la vida va a tener como, es positivo si lo queremos ver así, pero como ya llevamos el neither, ya se convierte en algo negativo. It is already negative. Yes. Si nosotros hiciéramos como lo, así como poner así, you can't drink neither soda nor juice, eh, no, eso sería incorrecto, porque ya... Si lo ponemos así, llevamos dos negativos, el cual es can't y neither. Y recordemos que no se puede negar dos veces en la misma oración. En inglés no se va a poder. Entonces tenemos que poner la positiva por las reglas gramaticales que tenemos. You can drink neither soda nor juice. Aquí es donde me explotó el cerebro porque... Yo estoy tratando de negarlo, al igual que la primera. I have not neither patience, but. Es que como nosotros ocupamos el no para negarlo, entonces cuando utilizamos este es que tenemos que eliminarlo. Correcto. Aquí es donde se tiene que eliminar. Porque el no siempre va a ser el neither. Right? Entonces ese ya es el negativo. Um, Sustituyo el neither por el no. Correcto. Entonces, si queremos decir, um, vale. tú no puedes cantar ni bailar. Tú no you puedes. Can sing neither. Vale. Veamos. You can. Uh -huh. You can. You can. Tú no puedes ni cantar ni bailar. Neither sing or dance. You can neither sing nor dance. Why in why in the in the previous you can drink neither soda nor juice is the verb after the, the, the word neither. In this case, we, or, or, or is incorrect, the, the structure of the, of the second, of the, of the third phrase. It is correct. Can, uh -huh. Ah, okay. But, no. But why in the second one, we use the verb uh -huh. before neither. Yes. In this case, I use the verb after neither. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically it's because I, I, I get what you actually mean, but in, if you look at that, we have soda nor juice, two nouns. And here we have just two verbs. And then the action, I mean, here we have the action, which is you can drink neither soda nor juice. I mean, the, the sentence is different from the third one because on the third one, you can neither sing nor dance. To, this is the verb. Y aquí el verbo es drink. El otro es el modal, verbo modal que usted ve aquí. Este es el verbo en la tercera oración de poder. Y aquí el can está um, trabajando como un modal. Este, no, entonces, I use ¿Mm? you can sing neither nor dance. Uh -uh. Ah, es que tengo lo pegado, el neither y el or nor. Uh -huh. Ok, ok. Uh -huh. Yes, no se podría. Ajá. Mm. Ok, nosotros no podemos hablar. 
Nosotros no podemos hablar alemán ni chino. Nosotros no podemos hablar ni alemán ni chino. You can tell neither George or Chinese. Uh -huh. We can speak. Oh, or speak. Okay. Uh -huh. Neither German or Chinese. Nor nor Chinese. Chinese. Yes. Y aquí es verbo modal. Esas son habilidades. Teacher, you, you correct me saying talk and you use speak. Can I use talk? We can talk. Mm, no. I mean, because of, of the interpretation. Um, aquí es como un verb choice. Es como una elección de verbo. Entonces, cuando hablamos de idiomas, Ok, vamos a utilizar siempre speak. Okay. Languages, speak. Uh -huh. Siempre, eso es como, un, uh, como una regla, es como una colocation. Ok, cuando hablamos de idioma, siempre vamos a usar speak. Es el verbo como que está establecido para los idiomas, speak. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So then, um, okay. Let's move. And now it's your turn. I need to create three sentences using neither nor. Yeah. Three sentences. I will leave this one so you can have the idea. Neither nor. Okay, Maurice, yes. I can drive neither car nor motorcycle motor. Yes, you are missing the R. Yes. <laughs> okay, Maris, that one is perfect. Okay, but um with the first one is perfect because it's in the simple past. But the second one should be in the simple past as well, which is a simple past of common. It 
it will be came. Okay, neither they nor you went to the show. Yes, Maurice, I can dance in the cumbia nor salsa. You should go out neither Friday. We eat sandwich in our burger. Okay, yes. Just number two, Emerson without two. And number three, Sebastian is neither quiet nor well behaved. Neither my father nor Mayra nor with the R nor my sister can take care of my pet. Yes, neither my father nor my sister can take care of my pet. Mm -hmm. Yes, Wendy. Um, in that case, Tony, nor source without the ing. Okay, pero se entendería surfear. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ah, se entendería surfeando. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yes. They can neither dance or drink soda. I can neither take vacations nor rest at work. At work. At work. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Okay, but neither I drink coffee nor. She can neither study nor clean the house at the same time. At the same time. Uh -huh. Okay, Carlos. Uh -huh. All right, guys. Very good. This is just um for you to improve, right? As speaking, guys, whenever you are going to give options, all right? Okay, now let's continue because we still have 
this information, which is really important about this topic. Yes. So in English, we also have this topic, which is subject and verb agreement. La concordancia del sujeto y del verbo, which is very important. Y es lo que se enseña cuando usted está aprendiendo básico, que se le dice. Does va con she, he, and it. Do va con you, we, they. Eso es subject and verb agreement. So the same thing um, happens with this topic. Okay. Para todos siempre tenemos que tener cuidado con el sujeto y la concordancia del verbo. So the verb in an either or agrees with the noun or pronoun closest to it. ¿A qué se refiere? Fíjense en esos dos ejemplos. Yes. Either his mother or my sisters are singing in the party tonight. Either my sisters or his mother is singing in the party tonight. ¿Qué es lo que ve en esas dos oraciones? Primero que nada, vemos que en esta tenemos el singular, his mother. Y la que le sigue a or, la, el cual es el último sujeto, my sisters, y es plural. Por lo tanto, nosotros vamos a utilizar are. Porque vamos a tomar en cuenta el que está más cerca Básicamente, de or, de es. Yes. Entonces, ahora nos movemos a la segunda y le damos vuelta. Fíjese bien, en esta empezamos con my sister, lo cual es plural. Pero el que está más cerca de or es singular. Entonces, la regla dice que voy a tomar en cuenta a este para definir cuál es el verbo que voy a utilizar después. ¿Sí? Entonces es bien importante, eso ya es meramente gramática. Eso sí es muy, muy gramática, guys. Cuando usted, para los que en algún momento quiera tal vez aplicar a algún lugar bilingüe, ¿verdad? trabajar en algún lugar eh, usando inglés, le van a hacer exámenes. Y estos temas son evaluados. Esto es así porque la mayoría de veces se utiliza mucho en contexto de negocios. Entonces, eh, básicamente tiene que aprenderse estas reglas gramaticales. Yes, it's a grammar, merely grammar. Mm -hmm. ¿Dónde pu pudiese encontrar usted como la confusión? Probablemente en la primera dice, ok, la primera es entendible, ¿verdad? Porque aquí yo veo plural, entonces yo pongo are. Pero la confusión viene, ¿qué pasaría en este caso en este, verdad? Mire. Que obviamente tenemos my sisters. Entonces usted dice, pero eso es plural. Entonces es hard, dice, porque son dos. No. Solo se toma en cuenta la que le sigue a or. Ahí podría existir la confusión. Porque vemos que tenemos dos sujetos, my sisters or his mother. Y cualquiera podría poner are porque tengo dos sujetos. Pero no es así. Tenemos que tomar en cuenta this one. Or his mother. In this case, teacher, is only for are or is. Or applies to the, to the verb with s or not with s. Exactly. También aplica para third person, with the simple present, with the simple past. Um, well, the simple past, no, because it's the same. But with the was, where, has, have. Um, it applies con todo, aplica con todo lo que tengamos la diferencia de tercera persona, segundas personas, primeras personas. Con todo aplica la regla. 
with all of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, with all of them. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other question? Sure. And the second one, when yes. I try to translate. Mm -hmm. Su madre, ni mi hermana, ni su madre, está cantando. Pero, All right. pero es ni mi madre, ni mi hermana. O su madre están cantando. Uh -huh. Están pero, cantando. Pero como es is, es está. Hace referencia al último. O están uh -huh. con él. Están. En este caso como son dos. Pero es lo que mencioné. Que es mer merely grammar. Eso ya es muy gramática. Entra la interpretación. y es Pero la interpretación sería... Eh, o su hermana o su mamá están cantando en la fiesta esa noche. Ajá. Pero en la gramática, es más que todo eso es gramática. De tomar en cuenta es que está a la par de or. Uh -huh. But the interpretation that you give is okay as well. I mean, it's okay. Okay. So, in this case, subject and verb agreement. And if you want, you can look into that topic because it is really useful. You will learn a lot with this topic. Then we also have neither nor, which is the same because uh, it says that the verb in a neither nor sentence agrees with the noun or pronoun closest to it. Same thing. Neither my sisters nor my mom is sad. Neither my mom nor my sisters are sad. Only apply to the neither and nor. Or, or with the other uh, agreements too. For example, solo cuando, solo cuando tengo el neither and nor es cuando voy a hacer esta regla. Cuando tengamos neither and nor y cuando tengamos either or. Pues sí. Solamente, esta es como la exclusión a la regla, entonces, ¿verdad? Sí, correcto. Estas. Ya, pues, Uh -huh. Any other question? Okay. Yes, you're going to master this just with practice, right? With practice, practice, practice. Uh -huh. But okay, so let's see. Let's move. And if you don't have any question, we are going to take the grammar quiz. The grammar quiz for today is not... Um, I mean, there is one question about this topic, but um, we have 10 questions on that quiz. So nine of them are for different topics that you have covered already, okay? So in this case, it is about vocabulary. It is about grammar. It is about um, different topics that we have covered, okay? So I'm going to send the link and let's say this quiz, grammar and vocabulary, okay? There you go. That one is the link and the passcode is going to be grammar. And that is the passcode. So you will have 10 questions, okay? Um, general questions, general questions guys about different topics. Um, 
Yes, I'll give you a couple of minutes. Pay attention to the question, okay?
Okay. Um, let me see. Yes, I think that it was kind of confusing. Yes. Um, mm, okay. I can see that we need to work on prepositions. Yes, we need to work on prepositions, guys. And let me see. Well, the other, oh, yes, this one. Ah, yes. This one um, is the idiomatic expression. I hope on the next module you can cover this, okay? Which are idioms. I'm going to prepare maybe one class for tomorrow. Okay, so this one is basically um, about idioms, idiomatic expressions. After the argument, they both did their best to clear the air. So clear the air is an idiom that means eliminate the tension. Clear the air. Let's clear the air. Eliminemos la tensión. Eliminemos ese sentimiento malo después de una discusión con alguien. Or maybe aclarar las cosas. También puede interpretarse como aclarar las cosas. Es que no tenía sentido para mí clean the air. Entonces Ahí era más clear. Pero... Ajá. Pero no le hallaba sentido. Sin embargo, para, para que la frase tuviera algún tipo de contexto, dije, bueno, o sea, después de que eso, limpiar el aire, ¿cómo? Pues? Entonces, es como <ríe> yes. aclarar el aire o aclarar la situación, algo así. Ajá, uh -huh. yes. Uh, so, those are idioms. But that one, I think that, uh, yes, it was kind of difficult for some of you guys. And I, I can see that the one that you fail, most of you is the uh, number one. Yes, are you familiar by the Syria? Pero with no tiene sentido. ¿Cómo entonces? Okay. So, guys, um, remember that in this case, we use prepositions and we use them. Uh, I mean, they have a purpose, right? Each preposition has a purpose. Yes. So, in this case, um, when we say this area, uh, we cannot say by this area. The preposition that goes with with this area is with. Yes. By this area, no. Yes. Ah, uh, pero are you ah uh, me equivoqué antes. Are you familiar? Yo uh -huh. pensé que the you está su familiar por esta er, por esta área. Ah, uh, la er. Uh, no. Mató, no la vi. <laughs> Okay, so are you familiar, right, with this area? Mm -hmm. That one, I see that that one was also really difficult for some of you. Mm -hmm. And also number three, why did you go to the library? To get some books to read. Mm -hmm. And the other one that I can see that most of you fail, and it's okay, I mean, it's a new topic for you. We haven't covered it like at all. What's the last one, right? So in this case, guys, um, neither means ninguno. Yeah, in this context, it means ninguno. Did you watch a comedy last night? No. I will no. Yes, no, we watch two films, but, ahí va la contracción, aquí va con el contraste, ok, but, pero, ninguno de ellos era comedia. Porque dice, did you watch a comedy last night? No, desde ahí le está diciendo que es algo negativo, no, we watch two films. Y si le ponemos, but both of them were comedies, estamos diciendo como, no, no vimos dos, uh, no, vimos dos films, pero los dos eh, eran comedia. Entonces estaríamos contradiciendo lo primero, que es no. No. 
We watch two films, but neither of them were comedies. Pero ninguno. If the answer, uh, if you change the no for, for yes, in this case, we can mm. use either or both. Mm. Okay, so do you watch a comedy last night? Yes, we yeah. watched two films. But we need to remove but. Porque el but oh, siempre va negativo. Me, es algo Ahí negativo. Con, uh -huh. El contraste. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we can say, hey, do you watch a comedy last night? Yes, we watched two films. Both of them were comedies. But without but. Because but is negative context. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, guys. I, I can see that. Um, I mean, we are on the average. Okay. All right. So let's take the listening quizzes. Okay. So there you go with the first one. And the passcode listening. Passcode listening. Okay. Capital letters. Listening. I'm going to play the recording twice, but if you need an extra time, let me know. Um, the audios are similar to the ones that we um, that we listened uh, to yesterday, right? Let me see. Just let me double check if this is the one. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, let me know once you're ready so I can play. The first one. Just let me double check because. Ah, oh, yes, this is the one. Okay, so here we go. This is the last straw, Mark. Over the past three months, you have been late over 15 times and you've missed several very critical meetings. On top of all of this, you have failed to turn in your weekly reports on time. I've discussed the problem with you dozens of times, yet you have not made any effort to change. I'm afraid I have no other choice but to let you go. I've bent over backwards trying to keep you on as an employee of this company, but I can only do so much. This decision is effective immediately. I would like for you to clear out your desk at once. What is happening to Mark? Okay, the second time, okay, here we go. This is the last straw, Mark. Over the past three months, you have been late over 15 times, and you've missed several very critical meetings. On top of all of this, you have failed to turn in your weekly reports on time. I've discussed the problem with you dozens of times, yet you have not made any effort to change. I'm afraid I have no other choice but to let you go. I've bent over backwards trying to keep you on as an employee of this company, but I can only do so much. This decision is effective immediately. I would like for you to clear out your desk at once. What is happening to Mark? Okay. Do you want me to play it again? Yes. Okay, yes, here we go. This is the last straw, Mark. Over the past three months, you have been late over 15 times, and you've missed several very critical meetings. On top of all of this, you have failed to turn in your weekly reports on time. I've discussed the problem with you dozens of times, yet you have not made any effort to change. I'm afraid I have no other choice but to let you go. 
I bent over backwards trying to keep you on as an employee of this company, but I can only do so much. This decision is effective immediately. I would like for you to clear out your desk at once. What is happening to Mark? Okay. Perfect. So he said uh, one idiom as well. This is the last trope. Uh -huh. This is the last straw, Mark. What is the meaning of this is the last straw? This is the last straw means esto es el colmo. When you are tired about something like esto es el colmo, right? Fired. All right. Um, Let's take the second one and the last one for today. Okay, there you go. And the passcode is the same. Listen, capital letters. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. Pay attention to this one, okay? Here we go. Huh? Yeah. Program. Water will be shut off from 10 a.m. Here we go. One, two, three. Due to the city's water conservation program, water will be shut off from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday, September 5th. Tenants are advised to take appropriate measures. Water service will resume as usual following this inconvenience. Who is this message addressed to? Okay. Here we go again. Due to the city's water conservation program, water will be shut off from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday, September 5th. Tenants are advised to take appropriate measures. Water service will resume as usual following this inconvenience. Who is this message addressed to? Hmm. Okay, again, the last time. Due to the city's water conservation program, water will be shut off from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday, September 5th. Tenants are advised to take appropriate measures. Water service will resume as usual following this inconvenience. Who is this message addressed to? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to take the attendance before moving on to the speaking part, okay? 
Just give me one second. Atilio Ernesto Castillo. Present. Thank you. Carlos Omar Linares Cañas. Present. Thank you. Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez Díaz. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Present, miss. Thank you. Fátima Gabriela Loza Castillo. Present, teacher. Thank you, Fátima. Um, Jonathan José González Domínguez. Present. Thank you. George Antonio Sánchez Quiñones. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López Montes. Present. Thank you. Juan Antonio Elías Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan José Herrera Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you, Juan. Carla Sofía Argueta Chévez. Carla Present Sofía. teacher. Thank you, George. And let me see Carla, Carla, Carla. Let me see Carla. Okay. Kenya Elizabeth Rodriguez Elaya. Kenya. Uh, Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. Okay. Luis Miguel Corbera Enriquez. No. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Yes. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña de Aparicio. Present. Thank you. Nelly Lilibeth Andrade García. Yes, I, I, I know that you are there. Eh, Raúl Antonio Jordán Miranda. Sandra Abigail Bonilla Cano. And I know that Sandra is there. Wendy Maricela Ramírez Guevara. Thank you. Yes, I saw Carlita, but I don't see her. Okay. So let's move, guys. And well, we still have something to cover. Okay, so let's talk about this, okay? This is um, something that I would say that is extra information for you to know, okay? Whenever we want to agree, okay? When we want to agree with somebody, yes? So we are going to cover agreeing and disagreeing. So in English, we have those common expressions that you sometimes maybe hear, right? Instead of us using just me too, me too, me too, el yo también, yes, podemos utilizar lo que vamos a ver en este momento. Y todo lo que vamos a ver en este momento significa yo también, pero con algo distinto que me too. Yes. So um, we use so to show agreement with positive sentences. So as you can see, where it says person A, we have sentences. And I'm pretty sure that you are able to identify the tenses already. So number one is verb to be. Number two, future going to. Number three, simple present. Yeah. Number four, simple present tense, third person. Simple past, preference, Future will, present perfect, modal verb, modal verb, modal, and the last one, past perfect. You see? So now, for example, if I say to you, I am happy today, and you want to say, yo también, en lugar de decirme, me too, teacher, ¿cómo me va a decir? So am I. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm going to the beach tomorrow. You say me quiere decir yo también. So am I. So am I. So am I. The auxiliary. So by saying so am I, está diciendo I am happy too. I am going to Brazil too. En lugar de decir el me too, podemos utilizar todo esto. Now, what you need to pay attention to is what the other person says, 
right? The tense that the older person uses. Y es aquí donde los tiempos verbales se convierten en algo esencial para que usted pueda hablar bien el idioma. Yes? So, for example, if you uh, listen to somebody and that person says, right, hey, eh, I went to the concert last night. Y usted quiere decir, hey, yo también. So did I. Yeah. So you are going to improve, enhance, elevate your speaking. Okay. But you need to pay attention to the other person's sentence, the tense that the other person is using. Because as you can see right here, we change all of them. I mean, the auxiliary. Stephanie has a new boyfriend. So does Mary. Maria también. Um, whenever somebody says to you, hey, you are really intelligent. You are really intelligent. Ah. And so are you. Y tú también. And so are you. Yes. So for example, I'm going to give you some sentences and you need to reply me too by using this, right? No, me too, using this. Yeah. So um, I ate pupusas yesterday. So do I. Oh, so did I. Okay, hi. Mm -hmm. Simple pass. So did I. I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. Mm -hmm. huh? So am I. Oh, no. So do I. Simple present. I repeat another time the sentence, please. Yes. I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. You wake up. Uh -huh. So do I. Uh -huh. I will go to Europe next year. So Will I? Uh -huh. Correct. I have studied English three years. So do so do I. So, I have I have studied English for three years. So have I. So have I. Uh -huh. I can play the piano. So can I. So can I? Yes. Hmm. I should go to bed early. I should go to bed early. So should I. So should I. Mm -hmm. I am hungry. So am I. So am I. I. Mm -hmm. You see? We need to pay attention to 
the tense. The other person. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's pretty much what we need to pay attention to. And you have this instead of using me too. Because me too, it is something that we need to not forget about, but you need to improve and get more vocabulary, okay? So then let's move to the negatives, okay? To say, yo tampoco, okay? Yo tampoco es así, como es. For example, I am not hungry. Yo tampoco, o ni yo, ¿verdad? Neither am I. I'm not going to quit. Neither am I. They don't, negatives, they don't speak French. Neither do I, ni yo. Uh -huh. Stephanie doesn't eat meat. Neither does Mary, ni Mary. Mary didn't go to the party, neither did I. I wouldn't like to do his job, neither would I. He won't stop talking, neither will you. Neither will you. You haven't finished your meal, neither have you. I can reach the top shelf, neither can I. You shouldn't talk in the movie, neither should you. Yes, we couldn't hear him, neither could we. I hadn't seen her before, neither had I. So those are just common expressions, guys, for you to say, ni yo tampoco, yo tampoco, ni yo. Mm -hmm. Es bien común cuando uno dice, eh, I don't know about that topic. Y a veces eh, nosotros queremos, queremos decir, ni yo. Podemos decir, si yo le digo, I don't know about that topic. ¿Cómo puede concordar conmigo utilizando esto? I don't neither know do about that topic, neither do I. Una forma simple para que no le cueste tanto, en este caso sería, ¿cuál sería la forma simple? Me neither. Me neither. Es lo mismo que utilizar todo lo que estamos viendo aquí en negativo. Eso es yo tampoco, ni yo. Me neither. I don't know about that topic. Me neither. No me too, ¿ok? Porque me too es yo también. Me neither es yo tampoco. Solo acuérdese que yo tampoco siempre toda la vida va a ser me neither, me neither, me neither. Cuando se quiera decir yo tampoco o ni yo, me neither. I didn't do my homework, me neither. I didn't call the supervisor, me neither. I didn't eat vegetables yesterday, me neither. Yeah, me neither, always me neither. But if you want to improve your vocabulary, you can start using those, okay? This is just for you to have more vocabulary. Do you have any question? This is when you agree with positive sentences, and this is when you agree okay. with okay. negatives. Okay. I'm pretty sure that it seems like it is a lot, right? But it's not a lot because you know this. What you need to now work on is this part. But then your listening skills will start working as well. Mm -hmm. 
And that's it basically, guys. I mean, when it comes to this. Uh -huh. Teacher, why? Why is me neither and no neither me? Because in all the others' interpretation is uh, at the start neither. I was confused when you say neither me, because me neither. Excuse me, because I think that is switching the the um, the subject in yeah. this case. Mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm, but the thing is that in this case, those are just uh, fixed expressions. Son expresiones ya establecidas. Porque también el me too, no decimos to me, porque el to me es otra cosa, right? Entonces, eh, lo mismo pasa con el me neither. Son expresiones que ya están establecidas que, si, por ejemplo, eso significa yo también y ese es yo tampoco. Entonces, eh, no podemos darle neither me como vuelta, porque en la expresión es así. ¿Por qué la dejaron así? Pues no sabría decirle exactamente por qué, pero en realidad es la interpretación que le dijeron, le dieron yo tampoco, ni yo. Y la primera, yo también. Pero no tiene nada que ver con, con este tipo de gramática, sino que eso ya son expresiones establecidas las cuales se llaman fixed expressions. Este también es un tema que usted debería, todos, right, en general, que ustedes deberían de investigar porque son las expresiones que ya están establecidas. Entonces, esas, y son muchas. Entonces, esas fixed expressions no se pueden cambiar para nada. Si usted se las aprende las más comunes, no le va a costar tanto tampoco eh, hablar el idioma. Son como los dichos, entonces. O sea, no puede tener otra complexión uh -huh. sino la que ya establecida. Correcto. No tiene, no puede, son ya establecidas que no se pueden cambiar para nada. Entonces, eso es bien eh, útil en estos niveles que ustedes están, el cual ya es un poco entrando avanzado. ¿Ok? Entonces, eso es bien importante que lo vaya investigando. Yes. Ok. All right, so now let's move. If you don't have any other question, let's practice speaking, okay? So try to speak as much as you can, guys. Yeah, try to speak. Try to use the things that you learned, new vocabulary. If you don't know how to say something, look in the dictionary. Yeah. So we're going to start with um, those questions. Do you think change is good? Yeah. What are some of the major changes that occur to people throughout their lives? Is your country changing rapidly? Mm, well, okay. What's the best season of the whole year? What do people normally do in that season? Do you like to wear dark or bright colors and why? Yeah. Tent, do you believe in fate or destiny? What makes you happy? And do you believe that happiness is a choice? I think that we're going to have to use the time to practice those questions. We still have more, but I think that we are not going to have enough time. Yeah. So let's practice just for around 15 minutes and then we are going to come back because we are done with our class. Right. So Maybe let's the same with destiny, teacher. Oh, um, but in this case, the interpretation is like saying luck. I mean, suerte. Suerte o, o destino. Fate or destiny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
uh, I know that they improve my English, but it's not uh, a common way for, for us to study or to learn. To learn. I think that I need to, 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 to learn more, to separate a few hours more to understand these topics. I was talking about that 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 this class is 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 so hard for me. I, I, I train to understand very well, but um, the complex of the uh, subjects yeah requires more and and more time to to understand and to make a few practice uh, uh, is yes. It was very difficult in this time, but but the the difficult maybe changing in in subject is it when you uh, understand and and make a different exercise, but it's interesting. Yes, um, I think that you need to practice. Right, I think that we need to practice a lot with that type of topic, so you you get used to right just getting used to like speaking and and using the topics is where you are going to learn right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay thank you okay um please and when we so far not the best thank you yes i don't know I is not just okay. Me Let's too. talk about uh, what do you think about the changes? Are good or not? Think the changes, the change. Good. Uh, for me, it's good. Why? Because. Uh, I have made a something different. Mm -hmm. The change for or be better in the life. Okay. That when is you... an important part. If it is to improve your life or no, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you don't? I, th I think that the changes are good, but mm, I don't know um, how to explain, but I like the change. But, um, uh, perhaps I I need a, um, a stability in mm -hmm. some aspects of the life, maybe. Mm -hmm. You would think about the the people when they get married. Um, I think that the the situation of the relationship with in in in, in pairs when parejas yes. and yeah, needs a level of stability, but the but if you ¿Cómo se dice de repente? If suddenly. If suddenly happens something wrong, mm -hmm. the stability of the relation change. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, I, I, that, that I want to, to, to say sure. is that it's good to change, but not all the time we need changes. Mm -hmm. We need a, a certain type of stability. Okay. Um, but yes, it's good because you improve your life, you um, learn about the issues, and you know to 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 all or to have a problems too be better uh, like Isaac Newton said that 
if he didn't try different type of materials, if if he didn't um, uh, ¿cómo se dice? Como pro, um, se hubiera equivocado, they uh, have if very he... trouble problems uh -huh. 90, 90, 99 times he didn't um, find the correct uh, material to make a book like. Mm, like. Tony? Yes. Mm -hmm. Here is where we use the third conditional tone. Si él no se hubiese equivocado. Ajá. He didn't. Past perfect. If he wasn't. If he hadn't. Uh, equivocado. If he hadn't. Mm, takes. May. Make mistakes. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Create. Created. Create. Created. The bulb light. Okay. The light bulb. Oh, oh the light. The light bulb. Okay. So you see, that's what you need to do, Tony. Right? To, to focus on what you are saying. So you use the grammar part. Okay. Right. Very good. Wendy, no, estoy <laughs> margen de error. Uh, my case, sometimes chains are good. Um, number two. Why are changes good? Good fit. Oh, but why? Because um, improved your health. Okay. For example, in the company, sometimes the chains uh, that implement a uh, uh, no se dan los resultados. Um, we don't have good results. Yes, in the company sometimes the change uh, we don't have the results. Mm -hmm. and, and take, uh, take back the 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 uh, antiguo proceso, the antiguo proceso. The previous processes. The previous process. Mm hmm Okay. Mm hmm And in life, talking about a general context? Mm hmm Talking about general context, do you think uh, change is good or bad? Uh, my opinion, I think it's good because when you, in general, when you change, it's good, for example, when you are younger and you change and you get more experience to be, or maybe you get responsibility and that's why you, that you change okay. and you get uh, more, more responsibility, that's why. The, uh, those kind of things change your mind. Okay. And I think the change in the life is good, but it depends on the age. Mm -hmm. It depends on the age, okay. And what are some of the major changes that occur to people throughout their lives? Well, Emerson mentioned one, which is getting fit, okay. What else? What are other changes?
another change could be because you are, you are focused in your in your life in your future and you work and you want to change something in your life and you or you maybe you want to get a or you want to achieve something that's why that you change okay many um, some some people uh, believe the the change uh, of the environment mm -hmm. people live uh, from the city to the mm, the countryside the countryside, uh, mm. many people think that that is is good change. Okay, could be. Yes, when you move out, right? Um, whenever we want to say enfocado in Jonathan, we are going to say focus on. The preposition that goes with focus is on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What do you think is the best season of the whole year, you guys? Do you like uh -huh, which season do you like the most? Do you like December? Do you like Halloween? Do you like Easter? I like you... December. I like this December for the for the uh, holidays. Uh, uh, in in my house, uh, we share uh, with all family, and in in uh, ¿cómo se dice? damos regalos. And we give yeah. gifts to each we other. Give, uh, we drink. We date. Turkey and chicken, okay. all uh, traditional foods. Hey, I like the 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 cool climate too. Oh, the oh. the uh the cold weather or the cool weather weather. Yes. Okay, guys, let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. So I think that uh, we are, yes. I think that, yes, I have all of you. All right. Thank you very much for connecting today. Just because of the time, we are going to stop right here, but I'll see you back tomorrow. Okay, guys? Have a good night, rest, and see you back tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Good night. Okay. Good teacher, see you. Good teacher, bye -bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night, guys.